Good morning. Good morning. Come, let's pray. Father, we just want to lift up Pastor Tay before you. Lord, this precious servant of yours is the apple of your eye. And I ask of you, Lord, even right now, that your healing grace shall just be upon him, that you pour forth abundantly upon him, that you will raise him up from this sick bed, healthier and stronger, to go the further mark for you. So Lord, watch over him as he rests in the hospital, and I pray that all infections, all inflammation, all infirmity, be gone in Jesus' name. Amen. So Lord, here we are before you, your word before us, and we ask the Lord once again to reveal your truth and give us understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, Psalm 142. Now, when we now come to 142 and 143 later, you will find that uh, it is not imprecatory. Imprecatory Psalm, by now you know, it is praying for the downfall of the enemy. But in Psalm 142 and 143, unlike 140 and 141, no prayers for the enemy's downfall. But sometimes uh, in our human nature, the, in the flesh, uh, wow, Anthony said, let him die. Uh, you know? uh, pray for vengeance, pray for this and so on. But Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 5 that we should pray for our enemies. We should. And the vengeance, vengeance belongs to the Lord. Romans 12, 19. So here, in Psalm 142, it is a psalm of instruction and it is a companion to Psalm 57. Because if you look at the title or below your title, uh, a contemplation, contemplation means instruction, a contemplation of David, a prayer when he was in the cave. His time in the cave was recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 22. We can read that go back. And in Psalm 57, it also was a psalm uh, written about the time when David was in the cave, running away from Saul. And so this is similar. So looking at the two sections, the first one, the psalmist complain, verses 1 to 4. Complain to who? The Lord Almighty. Who else? Then, the second part, the psalmist's confession, verses 5 to 7. So let's start with verse 1. I cry out to the Lord with my voice, with my voice to the Lord I make my supplication. Now, is this quiet or allowed? It is allowed. So, when you cry out to the Lord, you need help. Say it out. Cry aloud. Peter, when he was going under into the water, he did not mum his mouth and do a quiet prayer. He shouted, Lord, save me. So same thing, I cry out to the Lord with my voice. With my voice to the Lord, I make my supplication. And... The title here said, when he was in the cave, a similar picture would be when Jesus was in the cave as well. He was buried and the stone covered the entrance. He was also in the cave. Similar picture. But now, as we look at verse 1, I cry out to the Lord with my voice. Then it brings to mind Matthew 27 verse 46. Matthew 2, 7. 46. <clears throat> and if you have never spoken Hebrew before, this is the one. Okay. Matthew 27, verse 46, when Jesus was on the cross, and about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Laba Shabbat Thani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
and he was likened to like complaining to God, why have you forsaken me? And so it's okay because when you are in imminent danger, it is natural for your prayer to be a bit of uh, urgency, yeah, to be a bit urgent, to be a bit desperate, to be a bit earnest. It is normal. And so in verse 2, he said, I pour out my complaint before him. I declare before him my trouble. And God is open all season. 24-7, you can call upon him. You can pour out your sorrows to him. He hasn't got a 9 to 5 hour only. Okay? Come back tomorrow. Booking school. Come back in November. No. It is 24-7. And I pour out my complaint. I pour out my complaint. I declare before him my trouble. You know what that is? It means get to the point. Father, you know, today uh, the haze is 189. It is really bothersome. You know, it is this and that. Then you tell him everything else before you get to the problem. No, get to the point. I do not know if you have uh, prayed in small groups before and, and so on, or someone else prays for you. Oh, you almost want to say Amen. Because it's so long. It is just so long. God knows what you have in your mind, in your heart before you pray, right? God knows what you want before you pray. So, it is just your step of faith and an act of humility to ask. A proud person will not ask. A humble person, humble yourself and he will exalt you. And you humble yourself and you ask the Lord. He already knows. But the fact that you will, you will ask, it is humility and God loves that. And so, all your complaint, get to the point. Verse 3. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then you knew my path in the way in which I walked. They have secretly set a snare for me. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, that means what? I am up to my last moment. I am out of energy. I, I am really at the end of the rope. You understand? And then, when you can't, that's when God can. It is not about you, it is about Him. Because the enemies have secretly set a snare for me. And so, the psalmist was beset by danger and he felt a bit confused, I am sure. Why me? These are the famous words of people in desperation in sickness, whatever. Why me? Verse 4, Look on my right hand and see, for there is no one who acknowledges me. Uh, refuge has filled me. No one cares for my soul. He looked around. He, he was David, no? He was David. And he looked around. No helper, no one around. To stand by him and he was painfully alone no one cares for me for my soul now wasn't Jesus alone wasn't he deserted you look at Matthew 26 56 Matthew 26 56 But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then, then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Now this section of Matthew 26 from verse 47 onwards, it's about the arrest of Jesus. And when he was arrested, verse 56, last part, then all the disciples forsook him and fled. How can? They were with him for three and a half years. They saw what he has done. They heard, you know, a, a teaching from him direct. 
more privileged than us. But yet, they forsook Jesus and left. Matthew 27, verse 39. Matthew 27, verse 20, 39. And those, and by now, Jesus was on the cross. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, You who destroyed the temple and built it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Are you saying those people who passed by him when he was on the cross, none of them had benefited from his ministry? I'm sure, I'm sure some may have. But still, he had no friend, no one who cared for his soul. And then verse 41, like the light, likewise, the chief priests also mocking with the scribes and elders. Hey, these are holy people of the temple, the priests, the scribes, and, and the elders, eh? they were mocking Jesus. He saved others himself. He cannot save. If he is the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Okay? So the, the passerby blasphemed him. And then the holy people, they mock him. And worse, the robbers, criminals, they, they, were on the, they were on the cross because they were sinners. But not our Lord Jesus, but even the one on the cross. Even the robbers who were crucified with him, reviled him with the same thing. You follow me? The whole world is against him. At that point in time. So, that's why we study the Old Testament. That's why God preserved the Old Testament for us because it gives us a picture of the New Testament to come. So when you read Psalm 41, it is a picture of our Lord Jesus on the cross. And it of course came to fulfillment because it is the Word of God. So, that is the first section. The psalmist complaint. Now the second one, the psalmist confession from verses 5 to 7. So, actually the Bible doesn't have so, but I just added so. <laughs> I cry out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. In his dire straits, in his very depressing situation, who else can he turn to but the Lord? And he did so with confidence, in faith, and with bonus. I cried out to you, O Lord, you are my refuge. His faith is still in the Lord. I can still find rest. I can find safety in you. My portion in the land of the living. The psalmist David was still alive. And where else can he go? But in the cave, in the land that he was, this is God's portion for him. My portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise your name. The righteous shall surround me, for you shall deal bountifully with me. Now, if we look at verse 7, bring my soul out of prison. Bring my soul out of prison. Jesus was crucified on Friday. On Sunday, he was resurrected. But what happened between Friday and Sunday? He went down. And he went down to set the people free. These people in the Old Testament, because the Savior had not come. So they were in the waiting room, so to speak. And Jesus went down. If you look at Ephesians 4, 8-9. 
Ephesians 4, 8 to 9. I think I preached this sometime back. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended. So Paul was explaining and teaching us, now this he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fulfill all things. So he went down to bring the Old Testament believers, the Old Testament believers, believers in God, in Jehovah, and he brought them up. He brought them up into heaven. Okay, that's what he did. And so as the psalmist said, in Psalm 142 verse 7, bring my soul out of prison. And it happened. And then he said, uh, that, I may, that I may praise your name. The righteous shall surround me. The righteous shall surround me. Now, eventually, when David was free from this refuge, he was restored to his position as king of Israel. The righteous surrounded him. But our Lord Jesus, after he was resurrected, he walked around, right? And when he walked around, he had company. Matthew 27, 52, 53. Matthew 27, 52. And 53. Let me read from verse 51. Matthew 27. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. And the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints, saints are believers, who had fallen asleep, were raised, and coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. They went into the holy city and they appeared to many. The disciples may have deserted him, but the saints who have gone ahead, who have slept, now they have been raised and they went into the city. Jesus was surrounded by the righteous. Some more, one more. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. What about us? What about us? We haven't gone to sleep yet. We are still running this race of faith on earth. What about us? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Let me read from verse 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus and so on. But we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. The saints who have gone before us, the giant, the great servants of the Lord who have gone before us. Do you know what they are doing? They are looking at us and they are cheering you on. You know, they are in the spectator stand, grandstand, and they say, Wow, Roslyn, go, keep going, you can do it, you can finish cross the finishing line. And that's what the clouds of witness is about. The righteous shall surround me. For you shall deal bountifully with me. And this is the confession of the psalmist. Verses 5 to 7. So the title is The Lord is my shepherd. As yes, it is. Amen. <laughs>